basic strength patterns variation two. So we have one helping us again. We're in our red shirt, so we're getting strong and bigger, folks, in this red section. Now the basic strength patterns, if you recall in the book, I talk about how the grid is laid out where we do an, uh, like an upper body, a lower body, an upper body, and a lower body. So go across the page from left to right, uh, up, down, up, down. Okay, so you can give each body part a rest. And there are basic human mammalian things we need to do, folks. I can push one away, I can pull them towards me, I can pull myself up in a tree and get a mango or a banana, I can push myself up, and I can do a lunge pattern, and I can squat. So these are basic mammalian patterns, and they're all reflected in uh, the routine. Now, there's a lot of ways to push. We can push on a machine, I can push with push-ups, I can, so a horizontal push is a horizontal push, no matter how we do it. And there's a lot of things around the room here that allow me to do a horizontal push. So the routines give you some variation, and uh, in fact, that's the one we're gonna start off with. So without further ado, we're gonna give Juan a workout. TRX push-ups. So here's our TX strap here. And uh, we know that if we want to lengthen these straps, folks, the way the TRX is set up, we just grab the two buckles, we can pull them together, or I can grab yellow, grab yellow, and pull, and shorten them up. So that's how we do that. Go to the back of the TRX routines if you want a more review of that. So we're gonna have Ron, <coughs> Juan get into this, um, into our TRX, <clears throat> and I want him to walk out so he's at a, you know, maybe a 45 degree angle out here. And where are the straps? They're right over his shoulders. I want him to get on his tiptoes and stay on his tiptoes, and his hands are right underneath the shoulder. And then when he goes out, he's just going to allow his chest to fall down to the straps, and he pushes on back. And then the hands come in under the shoulders again. And then he goes on out and he pushes on back. And knock out 12 for me. One. So here they are. You can see the straps just kind of just gently graze over the arms there. If you have it a little higher, you can maybe avoid touching some. And again, I like it because it's kind of unstable. Uh, so the stabilizer muscles have to work and your big prime movers have to work at the same time. It's a nice way to start out. Now for his second set, I want Juan to kind of tiptoe back. So we're, we're going to start out where we were. Okay. And now what I want him to do is, uh, no, we're going to make it, we're, we're going to have him lengthen the straps. So Juan, lengthen the straps for me. Full length? Uh, pretty much, yeah. So we make this TRX harder if it's almost full length. So watch what happens. So here he is. And then I have him walk back into a plank here. Boom, look at that. So now he's using pretty much, now we have full push-up strength and now it's kind of unstable. Now give me 12, Juan, to see what this looks like. Is that harder? Yes. It's harder, folks. And he just wants to get through them. Look at that. He just wants to get, pen these babies out and get through them because they are really hard. So we can see that if we, we can walk out, folks, to make it easier, or we can walk back and lengthen the straps to make it harder. And two sets of 12, uh, pretty good. Nice job. Yeah, sorry. Machine press. Look, folks, in a gym, um, machines are not really rocket science. That's why a lot of people just use them right off the bat. And we actually wait a little bit till we use these big heavy machine patterns because we want to build your body up from the inside first before we do machines that stabilize us. So we just saw in the last exercise where one had to stabilize his arms through space. Now the machine's going to do it for him. And where we want the machine. The, so this is an adjustment. You're, you'll usually have some type of yellow knob here for an adjustment. So get the seat height. So do I want to push like this? No. Do I want to push down here? No. I'm gonna push right about the, the bra line here. And uh, when I do that, my shoulders come up and I kind of impinge on my acromium space in my shoulders. So our machine's great for us. Not if they impinge like that. 
And where's the axis of rotation versus the axis of rotation of my body? It could be a little off. So that's a warning. Um, and and our, my hands probably ideally would be more like this, but the machines aren't built that way, are they folks? They're built like that. We'll just go with it because that's what we got. So Juan's gonna sit down and you're gonna see right off the bat, if, the, uh, if this were a bar coming all the way across his body, we can see that it does hit about right here, right across his chest, so that looks pretty good. We can see there's two grip handles. So if this bothers you folks, try this grip handle in here, but we're gonna try this one here. Juan, go ahead and put it on something that you might wanna work on. And then of course we can see here where it's really far back there, so we can, he can push it out with his feet first. And then what I'd like him to do is just take his first 12 reps and just work into it, have it shallow and work deeper and deeper. So we're pretending he's kind of working this ice cold. If you come in ice cold, you can just work in that, have a lighter weight and work into it deeper and deeper. And now, now we're going for that full range now. And again, we're just letting him do his own internal cadence. We're not really giving him any um, speed patterns to do yet. So a uh, little couple more plays for me, Juan. And let's do our next set of 12. And what I'd like to do now is I'd like to have him push him out uh, on a count of one and then slowly come back on a count of two. Push it on a count of one. It just is a general uh, rhythm. He'll exhale on the effort and then inhale as he comes back. Let's see, watch him do that. So he inhales here, push it out on one. 1,001, 1,002, 1,001, 1,001, 1,002, 1,001. And again, I like going through full range of motion. Uh, I don't like these middle half range things. A lot of bodybuilders do that. Um, that's fine if you want to get pumped up, but I want strength through an entire joint range in every, almost everything we do. So a little harder one. Where we, so we slow it down a little bit, he gets rid of that springy potential of his pecs. Yep. And we have to actually now use more strength. So that's why uh, what I call slow is strong in general. So again, folks, uh, do two sets of 12 on this, uh, go up and wait, but 12 should be hard. So by that 12th rep, you really don't want to do that 13th rep. So that's what your, your goal is. TRX. T squat. I like these uh, because they we can't use the arms at all. It has to be all legs. I'll just demonstrate. So we're gonna get the handles. I'm just gonna grab it, folks, just by my thumbs here. See that? Just my thumbs are holding on this thing. I walk in until I'm in a T. So my hands are almost out of my peripheral vision and I've activated my upper back, it's really activated. And now when I do a squat, I feel the weight in my midfoot and heel, and my back is really activated, and I've got to use my full legs, get my body up, no arms. Juan, give it a shot, sir. <clears throat> so again, he's just gonna grab it by his thumbs. He's gonna walk all the way in, so he's really activated. And then he's just gonna go down, And he's got it. So we just want to point out, like here in the back, folks, it's really activated on one. You can see it. <clears throat> and it kind of puts the body in a nice kind of squat pattern here. Uh, he's just going to knock out his 12. But again, we can do two sets of 12, three sets of 12 if you want. And it's a good way to kind of get the back going and the legs at the same time. How we doing, one? You got your 10 or 12 in there? Yeah. Yeah, good. So that's it, folks. Sumo squat with kettlebell. What's a sumo squat? Well, I kind of put my feet out about 45. And then my hips just rotate out, and then my knees track right over that pointy part of my shoe. And that's all it is, folks. But the critical thing is, where's my bottom point? I feel a springiness in my adductors on the inside of my thighs, and it kind of limits me about right there. So do I want to exceed that or try to exceed that? No. Uh, 
honor those springy points, and you're going to hear that over and over from me. And so I don't know Juan's springy point. So Juan, why don't you just kind of stand here, and before we pick up the kettlebell, just let me see in our sumo squats, his body's pretty vertical, and he's just going to kind of pretend he's got a kettlebell, and he's going to go down in his sumo squat. And he could probably almost go all the way down to the floor if he has a kettlebell in there. But you can see how low his hands go. Good. So I think you're going to be a good one, so we don't need to put a block. So, folks, uh, let's pretend he's really tight in his adductors. And what would I do? I'm going to cross camera here. So you can always use a kettlebell, right, on a yoga block. And then that will limit and give him a target to hit every time he does a sumo squat. So, Juan, just pretend that you're a tight guy and we're warming up. Let's go ahead and give me 12 here and just work down until you to touch that block. So he's, you know, loose enough so he can touch it right away. So that's six. I'm going to take the block away now. And we're just going to let him go, see where his body just naturally wants to go. Is he touching the floor? Just about, right? So now he is touching the floor. And the kettlebell will warm you up. It'll stretch you out also. So now I want to have his gaze probably a little, a little farther ahead so he doesn't look at the floor. And you can hear that where he just kind of stomps the kettlebell a little bit when he gets down there so you know he's landed. And again, if you're tight, folks, use the yoga block. Again, two sets of 12, two sets, uh, three sets of 12. Um, go up on the kettlebell if you want more weight. That's it. Dumbbell row. Uh, again, everything's pretty straightforward in the gym, I think. But there's a couple things we're going to play with this. So if I do a dumbbell row, again, my knee is on here and my foot's on the same side that my dumbbell will be on and my hand supports um, my lower back here, so there's no pressure on my lumbar whatsoever. And I can pick it up and kind of touch my chest here. Notice I can also hold it in this orientation, like I'm holding an oar, and I can bring it up that way. Okay? So, both are good. Uh, when I hold it this way, I kind of get a little more of this upper back across the back, as opposed to being this lat dominant. This, I'm going to get a little more of those rhomboids and traps up there. So, uh, we're going to have Juan do it. And we're going to have him uh, just do his first warm-up set here, and I'm going to have him just do six. We're just going to row it up. And then he's going to turn that dumbbell 90 degrees, one, like that, and then do another one. A little different, isn't it? Definitely. Definitely different. And he's a little tight on his rows, folks. You know, he can only pull it back to here because he's got a lot of beef up in here that kind of prevents him from pulling that baby back all the way up. So uh, remember that thing we did on the push-ups where we made the push-up so hard? Juan, it's coming up again, pal. Here we go. How many times or ways did you count to four, folks? One plus three, two plus two, three plus one. Right? So he's on his set of 12, he's going to pull up on a count of one and slow, slow, slow. Okay? And I'll let him uh, just hold it in this grip. It's probably the easiest to do, especially if you haven't done it. So let's go on. I'm going to guide you through this. And here we go. We're going to pull it up on one, whoop, and then slow, slow, slow. Pull it up on one and try to hold it up there. So we're actually gonna, gonna give him a little lighter uh, dumbbell here, folks. Okay, here. Because I'm gonna see him be able to, when he pulls that up, I'm gonna be able to pull it up and hold, and then one, two, three. Okay, one, let's try it again. Three count? Yeah, so it's a count of, count of one up, up and hold, whoop, and slow, Slow. So we're gonna see if he can up and just peg it up there. 
Pull up, hold, and don't let it fall back, right? Slow, slow, slow. For three, pull up, hold, boom. And then slow, slow, slow. Pull up and hold, boom. And then slow, slow, slow. Now it's two twos. Now it's up for two. Let's go up for two. And then down for two. Up for two. And down for two. Up for two. And down for two. And one more, right, folks? Four of these. Up for two. And down. Now it's slow up for three. Now it's slow, slow, slow. Try to hold it up and let it release. Slow, slow, slow. Try to hold it up and release. Slow, slow, slow. Try to hold it up and release. Just four coming up. Slow, slow, slow. Try to hold it up and release. So you can see he was compensating. How was that one? Hard. Hard, right? Yeah. Okay, so you can see he was compensating. He couldn't get it all the way up. So for him, it's either because he's really tight or because the weight's too heavy. So we can even go lighter on you so you can get that pattern if you pull it all the way up. Okay, so that's it, folks. Uh, do that uh, twice on each arm. And let me tell you, those are good dumbbell rows that'll get you stronger. TRX squat to high Y. We're still in this uh, kind of pull pattern, but now I've added something after our dumbbell rows where we can actually put the legs into it and I can really activate my upper back. So if I did a dumbbell row, which is really kind of lat dominant or I'm on a machine, this can kind of get a nice high Y where I really activate this upper back. How do we do that? Um, get the straps. I'm gonna hold it in a high Y out of my peripheral vision. This is in my peripheral vision. This is out of my peripheral vision, so I'm really tight across the back. And then I'm gonna fall back one, that's how we do this. And then I squat, and then you're gonna stand up, and as you stand, you pull yourself to that high Y, and then you fall back, and then I stand and I pull to that high Y. And that feels really great up in my upper back. So give it a shot, one. See how it looks? My yeah, so, so first just, just stand there in this nice high Y, good. And then fall back through the arms. We're not really, it's not an uh, elbow thing. Fall back through the shoulders. And as I squat and then I pull myself like Rocky Balboa at the top of those steps. He squats and his legs help his arms, his arms help his legs. That's three. Four, these are looking real good. Five, and he keeps tension up there, he keeps tension at the top. What's that, seven? Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. 12, got it. Do two sets of 12 of those, folks, and you'll be Thank good. You. You'll have a good, strong upper back. Kettlebell reverse lunge, or reverse lunge with kettlebell. So Juan has a kettlebell racked here on his right side, and he's gonna face maybe this way here, and he's gonna do a reverse lunge with his right leg going back. So here we go, Juan, we're gonna do our 12 per leg here. And and again, if you want more load here, folks, what do you do? Get that kettle, kettlebell heavier. That's eight, nine. And we can make this a little bit cardio too, right? Because we're going to be doing, we can go back and forth with the legs. Okay, now on, let's wrap it on the other side, okay. if you would. So you take his watch off so he doesn't blow it out. And again, he's got a rack under his chin here, the kettlebell resting on the uh, upper part of his arm, like a little chicken wing in there. And then his left leg goes back. 
And that's it. So what he's going to do is 12 here. Um, and then we want two sets of 12, one a doubt, uh, or three sets of 12 if you want. So then he would just go back to his right leg and then back again to his left leg. So just that simple, uh, but a good, it's a nice uh, lunge pattern here, split stance pattern with the weight on that back leg side. That's important. I want that weight to be on the back leg side. You got it? Good. And then he would just do another set of 12 each side, but we got it. Forward to reverse lunge. Uh, Juan's gonna kill me because we just did this, but I didn't have the camera rolling, so he's gotta do this thing again. So we don't have a kettlebell on this, folks. So to demonstrate what a forward reverse lunge is, is we did the reverse lunge, we saw one in that last exercise, but then you go right forward into your forward lunge. Boom, and you go down there, and you go down nice and low, and then you push back, and we're penduluming on this leg, the standing leg, that's uh, doing all the load. So, Juan, sir, we're gonna give him a real good workout today. And we're gonna double count this thing. So he's gonna go on back and that's one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, Eight, nine, nine, ten, ten. He's got two more. And this left leg, folks, that left glute, that left thigh, that thing is really working. It should be burning right now. We're close to it. Okay? Now, his heart rate is up. We want to keep going with this. And again, now he's going to go right into that left leg. Verse lunge to forward lunge. Two, two, three, three, four. Four, five, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine, nine, ten, ten. And now this glute, that leg, that should be on fire, and you should have that pulse up and that respiration rate up. And we can hear one like a freight train here. Woo. And then do two sets on each leg, folks. That was just one set. Do two sets on each leg, and that will give you a nice leg workout. Hey, folks, this is vertical press. This is going to be a dumbbell one arm overhead press. I can vertical press this way, and I can vertical press this way, can't I? So now we're going to use our dumbbells. And there's a lot of. Um, I kind of like doing from this neutral position. See this, folks? This is called the neutral position. It's kind of the natural way the shoulders kind of fall. And when I rack them, I got the head right here. Now, I can actually put this out, but I kind of, again, I'm kind of crimping on that acromium space in my shoulder. And I'm very careful with overhead press stuff because when you get to my age, that someone that has a Medicare card, uh, we want to keep our shoulders healthy, you know, through our entire life. So what I like to do, is um, I, I kind of like doing it one at a time. So I kind of press from a neutral position and just do it one at a time. Now there's a lot of fancy stuff going on where you're gonna see patterns like this and then patterns where you reverse that. And you know what? That's a lot of hocus pocus a little bit. Let's keep it simple. Let's keep it as safe as possible. So neutral position, boom, let's just pump it up one at a time. Okay, simple enough. Juan, you're on, sir. And again, I don't like to overdo this, so we've been kind of playing with Juan a little bit today, making him, you know, giving him some real challenging stuff, but shoulder stuff, let's keep it within the realm of possibility, folks. Just one at a time, Juan, and we're just gonna pump it out. And maybe we'll just alternate count for 12. There we go, three. Four. And it's really that simple, folks. So uh, he can double count that for 12. Uh, one, one, two, two. He can alternate, which is only six times per arm. Uh, your choice. Again, just kind of work into your shoulder strength. Don't overdo it. Again, two sets of 12 should be fine. Um, put it in that third set if you're at that point where you're going for a hypertrophy. 
But again, here, I'd be careful of where that 12th rep is so hard you can't do it. Uh, back off a little bit, maybe do a 15 rep max there, but only do 12. Single leg. Oh, I love single leg stuff. Uh, so how do we do this? It's TRX Bulgarians. So again, if you go to the TRX videos, they wrap these things around and give you a singled up version. I like doing it really easy. And I just keep the two stirrups together there. I've got a dowel for safety and for balance. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and put that over the top of my foot. Just like that. And then I'm gonna hop out this way. My dowel's there for safety and help me do it. So I hop on out. And so notice the TRX is pulling that back leg back. It's a really great protected geometry for this forward knee. And I get a great stretch out of this back. And I'm having this on my back leg side. And then folks, you just go down into a beautiful deep Bulgarian. And it pulls that leg back. And we do that a couple times. And then what I want to do, maybe not have, make my rotators and all my balance muscles work, but have it here for safety. How do I get out of it? I just shake my little duck feathers back here and walk right out of it. So there we go, one. Let's give it a shot. So again, what I have him do, there he goes. And he's going to hop on out until we have a nice slight tension drag on his, that back leg. I'm going to make sure that he uses the dowel first just for safety, even though I think he's a strong guy and maybe he doesn't need it. But go ahead one and let's pop, give me six of them down deep and slow. No hurry with these guys. And if he wants, he can slide his hand down that dowel. And maybe keep the dowel a little closer into you. you want to just have it comfortable there. And again, if you're a trainer, you can be over here and be there safety with your hand out for your client if they need it. And is that about four or five or six? You no, know, six. Okay. Okay. Now try it without it. Just hold the dowel. It's there if you need it, but see if he can go ahead and do his final six. And now he really has to work these uh, upper outside glutes up here, which really stabilize and help balance the body. You can see him working at it and all of his hip rotators, those deep rotators in there. So those are activated much uh, better now, and you can feel them burn, right? Oh yeah. So everything burns more now, if we do it without the dowel. But again, have that dowel for safety, folks. Safety first. Damn. That's okay. So balance is kind of frustrating, right? Here he goes. And he's getting good low and deep there. Okay? Shake your little duck feathers back there on that foot. Ooh. Okay? And now let's try the other side. And we'll see if one side is as stable as the other or strong as the other. Or see how it goes. Oops. Oh, he lost one of his. So let's just try to get one. Let's start all over. And a lot of times what I do, uh, again, how will I do this? If I'm going to uh, uh, get this leg, then, right, I just kind of cross it and back it. You see that? I make a little figure four and back. And then if I, I switch that, if I go to the other side, I want to launch the other leg. I just cross it there and just gently put it, okay? And then I hop out, okay? So do his little figure four. I call that the little figure four. He's all set, he can jump out. There, he's all set. Again, want to get everything kind of nice and going and warmed up here. putting that stick out in front of him, he can just slide his hand up and down a vertical stick, or he can just do what he's doing, doesn't matter. Uh, these dowels are nice because they have little rubber ends on them that give them a little grip, 
And so now he's going to see if he can get his next six in free space. And now he's got to focus on that balance. And there's six. That's, that'll be his 12 come up. And there he goes. That's it. Two sets of 12 each leg and Bulgarian TRX. Those are great. Butt Busters. The aptly named Butt Buster. Again, it's another single leg exercise, which I really like. And we're going to notice that what I want to do with a Butt Buster is I'm going to hold a weight in this hand, do it just in free space first, and I'm going to hover an ankle right by my other ankle, right? Pretend there's like a three inch gold chain between your ankle bones and you have to keep that tight hover right there. If you need to regress it, folks, um, touch one foot to the other. If you want to regress it more, then make a little kickstand. Touch this heel to that this foot and make a little kickstand. Otherwise, I want you to hover that ankle right next to the other ankle and then we're just going to take the elevator down and we're going to try to touch the top of that foot. And you can see me struggle with that balance without a weight. So let's have Juan do his first set without a dumbbell. We'll just put it off to the side. So the cue is I want him to stand on one leg. It's interesting, he probably went right to his dominant leg, which is his left leg, and now he's going to try to, with his right hand, get low, as if he's holding a dumbbell, he's going to try to go down and take the elevator down and get it close to the top of that shoe. He's not bending over at the waist as much as he's taking the, the leg as a piston that's going down. So let's do, uh, let's do our first set one without any dumbbell at all. Now what does Juan naturally want to do here? He wants to throw that right leg out in back, like a big Tyrannosaurus Rex tail. And that big tail balanced T-Rex big upper body. But we're cutting T-Rex's tail off here, and Juan's we're making him balance. Now he can feel the how, how much tension is on that yeah. on that whole system, on his thigh and on his glutes and on his stabilizers, on his rotators. And that was about, what, six or so, or how many images did you do there? That's about six. Yeah, six. So let's do six on the other side one. Let's check it out. So trust me, folks, um, we have a dumbbell. You can certainly use a dumbbell with this. Work up to a dumbbell. Get the balance first, though. So just do it in free space like Juan's doing. He can do two sets of six. He can do two sets of 12, whatever. Uh, but just get the, get the body going, get the balance going, get the single leg going. And uh, trust me, folks, um, if we get these single legs really upregulated when we go bilateral stuff, you're going to be a monster. So good job. Never. Dumbbell squat to shrug. This is under the vertical pull patterns. And again, um, a lot of athletes spend a lot of time with an Olympic bar and we're pulling these things up and we're messing with our shoulders and how do we get strong up in here in these upper traps? Well, just do a shrug. Uh, and again, you want to get probably pretty heavy dumbbells. We'll just use these for, but when I shrug, I like to kind of scrunch the shoulders up by the ears and then I kind of like to roll them back from the side. I kind of scrunch up, but I try to kind of roll the shoulders back and keep the chest wide open and not collapsed forward. Okay, that's the idea. And I just threw in a squat just to give you some extra work. So it's a squat, shrug, and release. Squat, shrug, and release. And what does this mimic? It mimics 
and it prepares you for stuff like a one-arm snatch. So we need that shrug pattern to actually lift the bar explosively off the ground. But let's prepare the strength first and do these little shrug patterns, okay? So let's watch uh, Juan do it. So he just squats. And then from here, he shrugs, you can see his traps. And you're gonna to wanna to kind of put that head forward like that. See if we can keep the head back. So I want Juan to try to keep his head back. Go ahead, Juan, do it again. And then he's gonna shrug vertically and then kind of roll back. Go ahead, do it again. He shrugs vertically and rolls those shoulders back. Let's go to the side one, let's just turn. So again, he was having his head kind of, um, it's almost like an animal with a watering hole trying to get a drink of water. I don't like that. I like to try to keep that head back and that body vertical. And we're just going to turn to here. He's got pretty good uh, upper uh, trap muscles here. So let's go ahead and do it again, one. You can probably see him. And he just shrugs up. You can see him activate. And he rolls back. Go ahead. Shrugs. And really take your time there, folks. Really get that tight contraction. Go ahead. We got about four more ones, something like that. Whatever your number is. So it's that shrug muscle, but because we're just holding these weights down there, we're kind of structurally loading the whole spine and the body, and we can really get heavy with those um, dumbbells. If you compensate, you can't shrug all the way up and get a good tight contraction in there, lower the weight of the dumbbells, you're not doing yourself any good. Nice job. Lat pull down. Uh, in the other routine, we had an assisted pull up, and whether I pull my body up or I pull something down, it's the same action, and our lat's going to be working. So uh, Juan's going to get a weight that's reasonable for him. And again, you know, it looks like it's 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 pounds. It goes up to 170. But just pick, you know, all these machines are going to be weighted differently. So we're just going to see Juan uh, do a couple of his lat pull downs here. Oh, yeah. And again, we want to see if he can clear that chin, right? So pull that range of motion down so he clears it and he kind of wants to hold it down there. Good. And you see he has a slight layback there. And he's having his arms go up to a full extension up here at the top. And we pull all the way down. He has a slight hold down there at the bottom. They look pretty good. And so he's got a slight turn to those hands, right? So if a pull-up bar is like this, he has a slight turn to his hands, almost like a little 45 degree, and that's his natural way that his body wants to pull down. Is that about 12 on or something? About there, yeah. About there, okay. Now, so if we think about this, folks, if, if I pull down like a pull-up position, one did about a 45, what if I did like this hammer position here. And notice that your bicep activates. Your bicep activates, right? And then if I do a reverse, then I really get a bicep. So we can actually kind of tweak the muscle. So we're just gonna have one do a couple and all these orientations, okay? So we'll have you do four one in each orientation for us. So he's just gonna get down there. And I wanna have him hands, his hands just like he's on a pull-up bar, okay? So give me four here, like you're on a pull-up bar. Okay, we've already seen him do that little 45, which is his natural way to do it, but I want him to do it in this neutral position, okay? Now, do uh, give me four like this. Again, full range of motion through that joint angle, full extension at the top. Okay, now what I want him to do now is I want him to go ahead and turn him in so he can start in this neutral position, but when he pulls down, I want him to go ahead and pull in as he's from here, pull in, and so he, he activates his biceps, okay? 
Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, so the bicep is a synergist. It's a helper muscle. Uh, and now we're kind of doing these helper muscles. Uh, so it's just a way to make the lat pull down interesting because it's pretty straightforward. Not a lot going on. A lot of times you'll see a bar across here. And if you run across a machine like this that doesn't have a bar, uh, gee, we have a nice little dowel. We can put a dowel through here. And boom, now we have our classic kind of pull down lat bar. Uh, but again, it's a nice versatile machine with these, these cables. I like them. Okay. And that's lat pull down. Good job. Kettlebell clean to one arm press. If you have to review your kettlebell, go back to the green section where we teach you how to do a clean. And uh, the basic mechanics um, is we start the height football position, we swing in, and then as soon as the kettlebell comes out of the back cave here, right, my hip goes back, my elbow goes in, I open up my hands like a hitchhike, and then I come up and around and I rack it. That's a clean, that's a power clean, swing clean. Um, and then from there, I just, I just muscle that baby overhead for the one arm press. So uh, if you have to review it, go review it. But again, I'll just demonstrate. So we just hike football position and then we boom, flick it up. And then I just press overhead. This is my kind of start position because then I go, I release it from here and I swing again and clean, press, release, clean, press, release. And so I did it kind of quick, but notice how the kettlebell just gently falls around the back of my wrist. And if I hold on too long and see people do a lot of that stuff, I hate seeing that. Uh, so Juan, good luck. Uh, he's never really done many of these. So uh, he may have to go back and, re and learn my green kettlebell routine. We'll just see him do it here. Hike football position. He goes to a clean. And we see the kettlebell kind of flopping a little bit there, but he's not doing too bad of a job with it. So we can see that he needs to spear it, open his hands up, and because he's not opening his hands up and he's holding on to it, that's what's making the kettlebell flop over, okay? So let's see if we can clean that up on him. Spear it right away, open the hands up. As soon as it's here, Juan, we can open the hands up right down here. As soon as it comes out, open the hands up, and the kettlebell just falls across here. So it's in here, we open the fingers up, press it, and then you can grab it again. And then the rack, I would typically have a little tighter on the front of the shoulder. He has it a little bit in the back like this. I like the arm being a little more tucked in and then press it overhead and then release it. So we're gonna, we're gonna say that Juan needs to go back and maybe, maybe <laughs> learn that kettlebell a little better, folks. A little bit. um, but again, I'll just demonstrate uh, what I was talking about maybe the side is that we hike it, again, slow motion. As soon as the kettlebell comes out, we open those fingers up, folks, and my hip translates back, elbows in, and then it sneaks around the back, and then it's tucked in like this little chicken wing, and it wraps on the front of the wrist and on the shoulder here, and that's the position from which we do a overhead press. So uh, work on the kettlebell. If you just want to do 12 overhead press, you've already kind of done those uh, with our dumbbells. You can see we can do it with a kettlebell here, but, I, but again, uh, learn those uh, kettlebell patterns and they'll serve you well um, in the future. Elastic band, side shuffle. This is our twist pattern. So I want to put a torsional load on the body. How do I do that? Um, I'm going to hold it with my down alley hand first. And this is going to go over the top. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to side shuffle out, folks. Boom, 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 boom. Okay? 
just good quick agility. And then once I get out here, what do I want to do? I want to boom. I want to pivot on that back foot, boom. and I'm going to do these kind of torque pops. So we did these in the elastic band section. Uh, we're adding them here for a nice twist pattern. Uh, so give it a shot, one. And we might have them do uh, maybe four times down with four torque pops here. Here we go. So I'm going to have a quick side shuffle, agility. And then when the band is max load, and then I'm going to have him go back. Now, what I'm going to have to do, folks, I'm going to have Juan come out again, but he's got to keep the band right here at maximum torque the whole time. So come on out again, Juan. So from right here, folks, right there. His hand's got to go from there and come right back to there. This is max torque. You can't, no, see, see he's swinging past my hand? Up. Boom. Yeah. So I'm having him go from max torque uh, as he does these torque pops. Okay? Side shuffle back one for me. And come on out again. We know this is about where the limit of the band is. And right from here, boom. And he can even do go out fast but come back slow. Try that. Hold it. So go out fast and come back slow. Fast. Slow. Fast. Slow. Fast. Slow. One more. Fast. Slow. Boom. Shuffle back. Okay, great. Other side. So I want one to do that kind of fast, slow pattern in there uh, for max torque. I want to hold with this left hand first. Why? Because I want to have these muscles be the dominant ones that are popping that baby around. Okay, here we go. He's going to side shuffle out to his max. And here we go. Pop. Up. So, so he's too far out. So coming in a little bit. He's actually got the band to its limit. Okay, go ahead. Pop. And I'm going to pivot this back foot now. Watch well, this back foot. Boom. And come back slow for me. Fast, slow. Fast, slow. Max torque. Fast, slow to max torque. Fast. And you got to pivot that foot. Every time, every time you do torque, you pivot. Pivot, and then come back. Pivot, come back. Pivot, come back. Pivot, come back. Looks good. Shuffle back. Okay, come back out again. Give me a clean set. So he's going to shuffle out again. Now right here. Going to watch safety because he's came close to that. So here he goes. He's going to pivot on that right foot as he torques. Slowly comes back and max torque. Even slower coming back. Boom. And that's real quick. And this is real slow. This is real quick. Boom. And that's real slow. And you pivot. Good. So that, that's a pattern, folks. And then shuffle on back one. And that's it. So uh, let me get the pulse up a little bit. Oh, definitely. One arm farmer carry. Uh, we did two arm in our variation one of our basic strength patterns. And now in variation two, we do a one arm version. And what do I like to do with that? is that a lot of times when we hold something, it kind of makes the body wants to do, we, we compensate somehow. You know, we do something. We don't want to compensate with this. And how I keep from compensating, I put my hand on the back of my head and my elbow's back there. And I'm nice and tall, and this is my farmer's carry. And I'll walk away from it, and I'll turn around, and I'll walk back. And this prevents us from doing any weird actions and keep our core really, really straight and try to get the heaviest kettlebell that you can handle. And uh, if we had a heavier one, we would use it. But one, we're gonna kind of watch it go down and back a couple times on each arm. Maybe down and back on each arm. So again, his cue is, have him stand up nice and tall, have this hand in the back of his head, and the shoulder out, he keeps his spine nice and vertical, there's no leaning, he's gotta resist this weight through his body and now he walks and he carries that pail of milk, that lime green pail of milk. And he turns around and he comes back. And again, feel free to do that, you know, a couple round trips, three, four, five, six round trips, whatever you want. We're just going to do one round trip each. So Juan, switch it for us. And back of the head, keeps his torso nice and straight, resisting this weight, which is pulling him over and he's... Resisting it and go down and back for me. And again, folks, try to get the load as heavy as you can with as much weight to really try to pull you over. 
So you have to resist that and keep your core straight. Looks good, my friend. Thank you. One arm, L carry. Now, this kettlebell, folks, is about half the weight of that last kettlebell we just used because what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this thing up in an L pattern. See that, I've got an L. And wow, the kettlebell wants to be weighted down, but if I get it up to an L, I've gotta hold and stabilize it through my wrist, through my uh, upper arm into my glenohumeral joint, and I've got an off-center load on my body, so this thing is pretty neat, and I like it for tactical athletes and any athlete because it really gets our shoulder and our stabilizers good and strong. So basically, we just go into our L pattern, hold it bottoms up, we call it, and we just do our walks, and then we turn around, and we do our walks, and trust me, this will fatigue out pretty quick. And Juan, try this. If you want to go lighter, go lighter. Or if you want to go heavier, go heavier for me. So let's watch Juan first get that thing up to an L pattern. Ooh, look at that. See that shake? So now when he has to walk, go ahead, give it a shot. Down and back. So now we can see that that thing is really challenging his uh, wrist muscles, forearm muscles, and his uh, stabilizers in that glenohumeral joint. You can still see that thing is shaking, so that's about the limit here. And give it a rest one. Other side, we'll go down and back. We'll see how one side is versus the other. L pattern. Bottoms up, and we walk down and back. So good pattern, challenging. Your body's gonna work, your core's really gonna work with this thing. And the shoulder's in that kind of, you know, again, in that neutral position. Um, but build a lot of strength to those stabilizers. Nice job. Medicine ball, 180 degree slams. So what we're gonna watch Juan do is get your med ball, and in the variation one of our basic strength patterns, we were just simply going straight down, but now this is way more metabolic for me because I've got to take the med ball and I really slam it, boom! And then the ball bounces up and I come through space and I do a 180 and then boom! So the ball is bouncing to the either side of your body and then we're gonna maybe double count this one for 12. Nice metabolic interval. So I'll just kind of stand back and stand out of the way. And he's gonna make a lot of noise in the gym, so here we go. Boom. Okay, I'm gonna stop him right there. So Juan, if you can, just after you do it, go all the way over in one motion. So I'm gonna see these big rainbow arcs as he, instead of stopping through middle, he did a good variation, but now let's see if he can just do it from, from one side to the other. Boom. All the way over, boom. All the way over. So it picks it up. The pace is picked up. Three. Three. Four. Four. Five. Five. Six. Six. Seven. Seven. Eight. 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 Last four. 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 Three. Got it, my friend. 180 med ball slams. Thank you, Juan, for helping us out today. No problem. Great job.